I mean, northeast Northeast Pennsylvania is pretty much a, uh, a coal region. This is all anthracite. Um, but obviously, we don't use fossil fuels like coal anymore. So um, it's a it was booming at one point, and now it's uh, not so booming. So uh, a lot of people are miserable, and uh, we got great pizza. But uh, I think the I think the miserable part of it uh, really adds to uh, the art community just because of uh, I don't know when when depression hits it kind of you only have one or two outlets you either go get help or you express it yourself. first though what came first is that I know exactly what picture I took with you first we we're up at the um, uh, the thing of the industrial park by your house me you and Dennis oh yeah yeah I just took a portrait of you I took a portrait of you and I took a portrait of Dennis me and Barry first met each other like we had never still to this day me and Barry don't talk about really like making art together it's just something that happens every time like me and Barry really don't ever have an idea of what we're gonna do it just it's just, just happens like, and it kind of just turned in, yeah and it kind of just turned into like me and Barry working on a bunch of projects together that just fell fell together like it just happened out of nowhere So wait, what pictures came after that then? So then it was the one in my backyard, which had the which bloody which, nose. Yeah, and the bloody nose. And also one. you one standing with the foot by the like coming out of the suitcase. Yeah, the suitcase. Um. No, which one came first, the burning bed or like the the, the, the Kong face with the teapot? I never felt like Barry wanted to make art with me for any other reason besides making art. And that's that's his best quality to me when it comes to art anyway. His best quality to me is one of my best friends. But I think his best quality to me was he came to me and never said, hey, let's do this for a certain reason. It was kind of just, let's just do it. Yeah, and what spilled over from a lot of those pictures ended up being pretty damn significant, because that turned over into a lot Everything. of the ways that that I even took pictures. Yeah. Uh, obviously, not on the scale that you do, even though you know a lot of the stuff that I just did was on my was on my phone. But yeah, because when Barry first came to me, like he told me he wanted to take pictures. Like he's like, I don't, I just want to take pictures. And pretty much when I was when me and Barry first started, it was kind of like. Barry was kind of learning from me and I was learning from him. I was learning from Barry when it came to, because I've always been super weird, but I've, I'm always like super shy about who I act weird around. And when I was finally able to connect with Barry, someone just as weird as me, someone that just got it, I was able to bring that out of me. I was able to bring that weirdness out of me.
Like, um, before I met her, I was taking, like, those ghost pictures where I would, like, erase the bodies, and it's just a sheet and the body taken out. But when I, when I met Barry, like, we were doing things like um, having two people in a picture and, like, just getting more meaning behind stuff, kind of, instead of being more simple. All right, so up the cabin, we've met tons of people, tons of artists. Um, one in particular um, is one of Barry's good friends, Giorgio, who I had just met at the cabin. Um, probably like one of the fifth times I was at the cabin, I met Giorgio. And um, I don't know how to describe Giorgio. He's one of the most unique people I've ever met in my whole life. <coughs> um, he's just... Ah, God. What George, George is a wild card. Yeah, a wild card. I don't even know who, who best to describe him as so people know who he is. Yeah, I... he's just one of the most unique people <laughs> and has one of some of the most unique ideas that you can just run with. Like his ideas might be off the wall and not fathomable to most people, but you could take something from it and make something crazy with it. I think the best thing that Giorgio <laughs> brings to the table, though, when we're making art, is that he just brings the chaos. Yeah. He brings the chaos, and you need chaos to make art. Like, sometimes you just need, like, you can't be stiff and just, this is how it's going to be, this is how it's going to be. You need someone running around being wild, putting shit on their head, putting stuff on their face, like, just getting crazy with it. And Giorgio is that chaos. Giorgio will do anything. Giorgio will sit for anything. Like, he's just the chaos. And, like I said, you need chaos. So, I think that's where Giorgio fits in. He's the chaos in all the art. Yeah, yeah, that's undoubtedly true, and he's, you know, him and I have bounced uh, things off of each other for, for a long time when it came to painting, when it came to photography, and, you know, just like working with you, um, it was a pretty easy symbiosis, whether we were working on our own thing kind of individually or just, you know, like, th think tanking or whatever, so I mean, you know, in the years that I've known him, we've done a couple of shows together, we've done a ton of work together. Even if that just meant that, you know, we were working on separate things, sort of side by side, getting opinions off of each other as it goes, um, definitely made a huge influence on me. Um, showed me a lot, definitely a lot, widened my circle a lot, uh, up through New York. He's like family to me now, and still remains to be a wild card after knowing him for this long. Who's next? Uh, oh, oh my god, his cousin Dylan. Okay, so we have a five foot three albino Abercrombie model that also happens to be a prolifically talented painter. Not only who's not a talented painter, one of the best painters I know. Uh, yeah. His paintings are ridiculous. Dylan's They're a hypo realist and it's absolutely unbelievable, but to boot, he's arguably even more of a wild card than Giorgio. So when you get the two of them in the same room or just, you know, same area, it, all bets are off. Yeah.
I, yeah, well, like the first time I met Dylan was um, when we caught that the couch on fire. Oh yeah. So we had we had mm-hmm. um, we didn't really have an idea. We kind of just we we're gonna catch a couch on fire, and then we had a newspaper. And I don't know who even came up with the idea for him sitting on the, with the newspaper. Like I don't know. So Barry came up with the idea for him sitting with the newspaper, and we caught the fucking couch on fire. And then I came up with a concept that was like. That's the chaos, and no one's paying attention to it because they're so stuck in the news, and like they're they can't pay attention to anything that's right beside them. That's the chaos right next to them, and they're just paying attention to the news that's that's in his hand. So uh, yeah, we made that picture, and then um, the band from Canada, uh, Pup, used the picture for their album art that just came out. So, the dream is over by Pup. Go check that out. Okay, so, so Bam, Bambi comes into play because we managed to get her in the in the shots where it looks like you know there's the the, the face protruding from the ground with a with a flower coming out of the mouth and damn that was a, <laughs> those were some strong shots I didn't get to see your versions of the edits yet but uh, but I loved how mine came out because they looked wild as hell. I can remember the first time <clears throat> when I met Barry, well, when I met you, and um, you first took pictures of her, and it was the ones of um, in the tub. There's some influence there. I feel like um, she definitely had a lot of influence on uh, on on my work um, on a multitude of levels, um, especially over o- over a period of time. Uh, got me to dig a little bit deeper. Got me to be a little more poetic about some uh, about a lot of things, honestly. And uh, she's a lot more well read than I am. <laughs> but um. Yeah, that ended up b- bouncing off of a uh, of a lot, and now she's doing some impressive work herself. So that's pretty sick. Tall bitches, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> And then we even started taking like day trips where we just go meet up with random people and you know, like that one girl, uh, what was it? Some oh, with the horns, dude? Aaron, Aaron Crispel. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. sick. You know, that was we so broke sick. into that school. Yeah. <laughs> it was an abandoned school. FYI. <laughs> so, wait. So, let's think about what built from all that. Built from all what? Um, I don't know the, the 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 photos and the symbioses made from, um, you know, us the, like you know, uh, uh, us being friends and Giorgio coming into the play and everybody else and uh, it, it's all got a trickle effect. Um, there was definitely the pieces of art that I referenced directly to the photography, mm-hmm. um, like the self portrait that uh that I drew of myself that you and I did in the basement of my parents' house. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was very referen- like, you know, directly referencing, um, Joel Peter Witkin, um, we've done shots before that were very Lynch-inspired, like David Lynch, um, yeah. you know, we, we'd, we'd always be sitting around geeking out about Gregory Crudson and his work, 
and he's influenced by David Lynch, so I mean, you know, a lot of continuity there for that reason, I feel like. Um, yeah. Huh. Never really realized how all over the place we were. That's why we can't think about this. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I say art happens on accident. Because when you think about it, you get frustrated like this. Because if you try to piece it together, <laughs> you're going to lose your goddamn mind. <laughs> What comes from that conversation is that this woman has a son who's uh, very much into cinematography and um, you know super passionate and is sort of in the black sheep of the all, family yeah, but exactly. also at school. Very much an outcast. Yeah. Very much not knowing what he <clears throat> wants to do. No one else in his family really does art and he kind of just doesn't really know what he wants to do and he's really into fashion. Mm -hmm. right, so right. so she she tells us you know he's, pro he's probably working just like a block and a half down at a pizza place that uh that her husband owns, so we're like, all right, well, we're gonna go pay him a visit, and, um, we went down there, and when I went to go use the bathroom, you gave him a pep talk. I gave him a super big pep talk. <laughs> I told him that he doesn't need to be making pizza for the rest of his life, um, if he's the weird one in class, those are the ones that grow up to be cool, um, don't worry about anyone from high school right now, um, if you really feel this strongly that you feel weird, focus on the weird. Focus on why you're weird. Emphasize it. <laughs> and if you like it, you like it. Like it, it doesn't. If you're weird and you like it, don't you don't gotta worry about other people. I don't. I don't care. Like I think about death all the time, and other people will be like, "That's creepy. That's weird." And I just don't care because that's what I like. Yeah, and well, that's pretty much what I told them. Like you don't have to feel weird just because your parents don't do art, just because your parents do a nine to five. That doesn't mean you have to. It's pretty much what I told them. And I was like, "Listen, man, I'm out there really doing it." And I knew, I knew, a, like, I'm not going to boast and say who I know right now, but, like, I knew a couple people that he looked up to, and I was like, listen, man, like, I know these people, and I'm talking to you right now, too, so just understand that you already have that connection. You already, you're talking to somebody that knows people that you already look up to, and I'm telling you right now, you can do whatever you want. You can do anything you want. So I just gave him a pep talk during him making pizza, because he worked at a pizza place. Yeah. And what it boiled down to was, you know, don't apologize for being yourself. The, la mm -hmm. the, the worst thing you, you could ever do is apologize for being who the hell you are. And, you know, as, as soon as you come to terms with that, it'll let you do so much more without the hindrance of having to look back and make sure that you're getting the nod of acceptance or approval from everybody around you. The second that you could sort of break those confines, you're a lot more prone to thrive creatively. 